Welcome back to Next Gen Console Watch 2020, our show following everything about the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. I'm Damon Hadfield, and as always, I am joined by Ryan McCaffrey, host of IGN's Xbox podcast, Podcast Unlocked. It's almost not 2020 anymore. Got you I know. Show. I know. We're going to have to drop that little bit off. Uh, and Jonathan Dornbush, host of IGN's PlayStation podcast, Podcast Beyond. Beyond. Hey, Damon. Hello there. And this week, uh, we're talking about uh, some unexpected... Um, walls that have popped up keeping people from their next gen consoles all, all year long we were worried that uh hardware manufacturing scarcities would make it really tough to get these consoles there is probably some truth to that but some unforeseen events scalpers thieves bots uh things like this are are, are keeping a lot of gamers out there from being united with their next gen console both playstation 5 and xbox series uh so let's start discussing a few of these um IGN, I believe within the last week, we put up a, a, an article about how in the UK, there's uh, apparently there's like this organized scout or like theft ring of Amazon delivering drivers that are opening up a package that contains the next gen console, replacing it with something hefty. So no one uh, uh, suspects anything until they open it and they steal the console, uh, you know, actually out uh, while it's out for delivery. Um, Jonathan, do you have more details on this one? So the report from our really great freelancer, Bex April May, who had this happen to her, dives into some of the really big questions that are left lingering about what happened when these PS5s went missing. She received an air fryer in the mail instead of an actual PlayStation 5 and started seeing a lot of other people in the UK specifically reporting these issues. Uh, she spoke to a few sources about these issues, including someone directly involved with um what goes on in the Amazon warehouses. And this former Amazon employee who had worked at an Amazon fulfillment center told her anonymously that the packing in the warehouses is entirely covered by the managers and CCTV. All warehouse staff go through manned security checkpoints to exit the warehouse, and everyone, including management, is required to go through a turnstile with a random number generator search function. One in 10 people are selected, and if they are, they have to submit to a metal detector and turn out of their pockets. Uh, this warehouse source said, I once caught a guy trying to leave with a micro SD card. No way someone could get out with a PS5. So it seems as if some of the issues transpired at some point during the delivery cycle of themselves once they were out of the warehouse. But exactly who was involved and how this was all perpetrated is still somewhat unclear. One of the things that Bex was able to notice uh, and some other users did online was that the packing tape on the boxes, which for Amazon typically is very Amazon focused and promotes prime and you know, it's very specific to Amazon packaging here. She just had clear plastic tape, which is not what Amazon uses. So obviously the boxes were tampered with at some point during their delivery process, but how exactly it still remains to be seen. The reports of this happening to people is just too numerous for it to be an isolated event. That's why it seems like this is an organized effort. Uh, and now about a week later, I think Amazon is now finally sending out replacement consoles to those that, ha that had their consoles stolen. Um, Ryan, what do you make of all this? Uh, apparently this is isolated to the UK. This is, this, we, don't, we haven't heard any reports of this happening in the US. Do you suppose there's just like a, a different setup uh, for, for uh, how Amazon packages are delivered in the UK? Well, there are definitely different logistics. I mean, I, I worked in print magazines for many years. And if you're wondering where the heck are you going with this, Ryan, just bear with me for a second. The, the distribution pattern of how and and how and, and how long it would take for magazines to go out, because, you know, we'd get a, a big exclusive, a cover story and the publisher would always want to know, well, what's the first possible date anyone could possibly see it? Mm -hmm. And it's it's kind of a wild card in the United States, because if somebody lives next door to the printer and it gets just delivered the next day, there it is. In the UK, it's a much just a different distribution network. It's obviously a much smaller landmass. So that's kind of the 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 similarity I would draw there. So yeah, I mean, I don't know if something like that could work here on any kind of scale, but it's just really a shame. Number one, I mean, it's it's incredibly short sighted because is your job yeah. with the, the delivery service worth more than five hundred dollars to you? <laughs> I would really hope so. And number two, it just erodes, you know, we kind of have this fundamental trust in mail delivery and package delivery that these things don't happen because, I mean, valuable stuff is sent through the mail all the time. I mean, the United States Postal Soft Service offers insurance for, you know, in case anything's broken or lost, but at just outright theft, it, it's really just a, it's just an extra like kick to the groin from 2020 for these people yeah. that are on the wrong end of this. This has already been a tough enough year for everybody. And then to have an air fryer show up at your door 
in in a clearly pre-opened box instead of your PS5 or Series X. It's it's really just it's just a shame. And and hopefully, I mean, hopefully all these people involved do lose their jobs. And I don't say that lightly, but it's like you're going to lose your job when you steal someone's package and, and try to cover it up with an air fryer. Yeah, at least an air fryer would be better than the cat litter that uh, I think some other people reported receiving. Um, Okay, so those are the thieves that are keeping a lot of people from their next-gen consoles. Then there are the scalpers. Uh, Much has been said about uh, what a problem scalpers have been. This console launch, uh, people are having a hard time actually you know finding consoles that they can buy. We know scalpers are using bots to buy up uh, uh, consoles in bulk. We have reports of, of one scalper that had thousands and thousands of consoles uh, available uh, to to sell at a you know a, a highly marked up price more consoles available than some retailers but then there's actually some good news uh this week i believe it was a, a another uk re- uh another this is also in the uk a retailer called very reportedly canceled a thousand xbox series x orders that were placed by a scalper ring um so that's at least some some good news uh, uh a few at least a thousand consoles that were kept out of the hands of scalpers but all you have to do is look at ebay you know both playstation 5 and xbox series x going for upwards of a thousand dollars there i don't know ryan why why do you think this just seems to be so much more of a problem this console launch than it ever has been before do we have any idea why i don't i mean it's we don't know the supplies uh, relative to the last generation or even the generation before, because certainly Mm -hmm. the 360 was really hard to come by uh, for the first few months when it came out. And I believe the PS3 was too, even even at 599 US dollars. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different circumstances now. Obviously, the world is a very different place. Um, But yeah, neither Sony nor Microsoft has given out any numbers yet, which is which is a little Mm -hmm. strange. Uh, But but yeah, I mean, it's it's really uh, it's it's just a shame. I mean, there are just people where if and I can't you can't blame them. Hey, if if the PS5 is worth a thousand dollars to you to have it now, you can't I can't fault them for that. I mean, it's it's unfortunate that someone would acquire a system, uh, particularly by like scamming a, like with bots to, mm-hmm. to get it and then sell it at a markup like that. But it's yeah, it's tough to blame the end buyer. But but certainly sure. the the seller is. Yeah, I, I really hope. That, that both Sony and Microsoft are taking careful notes from this to apply lessons for next time. I mean, Sony did a little bit of it with uh, those those limited group of of direct orders that they did with people, where you had to enter in enter your PSN ID into that lottery. Uh, which I, I think we had a couple of IGN folks chosen for that. I wasn't, um, but I, hopefully we just see more of that, more of the kind of Apple style direct sales and direct orders mm-hmm. for at least the first round of of consoles come, you know, in another, in the next five to seven years, whenever we do this again. Yeah. Um, okay. So you've got the thieves and the scalpers, and then there are the scammers. And if scammer is, is maybe a little too harsh for what's happening in this scenario, there it's at least shady, shady tactics, shady people. And I'm talking about the people that are selling photographs of a PlayStation five on eBay for the same cost that the consoles are going for, for, you know, a thousand dollars maybe. Uh, and of course they're being kind of, uh, uh, transparent about it, at least, you know, in the very, very long headline of the listing at the end, it says photo. And then of course, in the description somewhere in all that text, it says that you're bidding on a photograph of the console, but you know, I think it's pretty obvious. No one, uh, of sound mind is going to pay a thousand dollars for a photograph of a PlayStation Five. So I think it's pretty easy to assume these the the um, people listing these auctions are hoping that somebody mistakenly uh, thinks that these are you know act- actual PlayStation Five consoles. Uh, Jonathan, since this is mostly happening with, with the PS Five, uh, demand is a little bit greater for those. Um, I think everyone watching this is going to agree that this is pretty gross, pretty shady. But since they're technically being upfront about, um, you know, the fact that these are photographs, what sort of like responsibility is there on the the buyer, and what responsibility is there for on on eBay? Yeah, I mean, I think the responsibility really has to fall to these services to start being a little more practical about catching something that is obviously meant to dupe people. Um, you know, obviously, if you are looking into buying a, a console secondhand on eBay or somewhere else, like 
please take all precautions, read every single word of the listing, uh, vet it very thoroughly, because people will do everything they can to make it seem as if it is legitimate, uh, up to the limit of obeying eBay's rules. And so, yes, they are saying this is a photo, but they are doing it in such a way that they are obviously trying to do people who may not be that familiar with buying things online, maybe in a desperate place wanting to get a gift for a family member or a close one and aren't really paying as much attention. Like these are obviously mean spirited and put in place to trick people. And so mm-hmm. I, I think it is great to have seen, we did see eBay come out and vocally say, we are aware of this problem and we are working to make sure that people are able to get their money back if there has been an issue or we, we will be vetting these um, as we see them pop up. But it is one of those things where the platforms need to get better at being proactive about this stuff because we are only continuing to live more of our lives and more of our purchasing lives online. And there do need to be uh, safety measures in place, I think, to really stamp out these issues that are obviously meant to do people who maybe don't spend as much time online. Okay. For this next story, uh, we need to be a little bit careful with it, but it's it's interesting and it's a story that's just developing. So we just want to sort of begin the conversation on this. Uh, and that is that um, uh, some third-party games right out of the gate uh, of, of this console launch appear to be performing better on PlayStation 5 than Xbox Series X, which is a little bit surprising since this whole, this whole time Microsoft has been touting the Xbox Series X as the most powerful console uh, ever made. It's, it's supposed to be more powerful than PS5, and the assumption was that third-party games would look and play best on Xbox Series X. Uh, but right out the gate, there are at least there are two or three games that, after some rigorous testing, they appear to be, you know, as of right now, working better on PS5. One of those is Call of Duty uh, Black Ops Cold War, which our own IGN's own Destin Ligieri really put through the paces on both consoles and has definitely found it's, um, it has not been performing as well on Xbox Series X as it does on PS5. And the issues seem to be related to ray tracing. Uh, so actually, Destin uh, provided some information here. He said, during our ray tracing tests, we found the Xbox Series X encountered several instances of choppiness and slowdown, which were not reported in another analysis videos like uh, from Digital Foundry, which we'll talk about in just a second. The game would skip frames, shadows would wildly jump off objects, and the game crashed more than once during our test capture. When it was running well, the game would maintain near, fi- near 60 frames per second with ray tracing on all platforms, and with it off, there are no issues on the PS5, Xbox Series X, or the Series S. And all tests were done during the campaign, the campaign portion of the game. So it appears that, you know, with ray tracing on, the campaign is performing better on PS5 than on Xbox Series X. Then Digital Foundry, uh, which does great reporting on, on just these sorts of issues, they really found that Assassin's Creed Valhalla is performing better on PlayStation 5 than Xbox Series X. Jonathan, I think you, you, you had that article up in front of you. Yes, yeah, they were uh, testing it on both platforms and they noticed that there was more significant screen tearing and frame rate dips uh, when aiming for 60 frames per second on the Series X versus the PS5. But it's definitely worth noting that that test they conducted that we're referring to took place before the patch that was released last weekend, I believe around the Thanksgiving holiday in America, that was uh, essentially introducing there were not uh, performance and fidelity modes in the game at launch. And so this was able to put in more performance options and frame rate options for players. Uh, so we we have to still check if that update also was able to smooth out any of those issues as well. Uh, I believe Dig- Digital Foundry found those same issues occurring with Dirt 5 and the devs have responded uh, so that they're working on a fix for that. And then I think Microsoft has actually responded to this whole situation saying that they are looking into it. And Jonathan, I think you have that quote up as well, right? Yes, yeah. So the full quote from Microsoft, which was originally uh, given to The Verge, but the full quote was, we are aware of performance issues in a handful of optimized titles on Xbox Series X and S and are actively working with our partners to identify and resolve the issues to ensure an optimal experience. As we begin a new console generation, our partners are just now scratching the surface of what next-gen consoles can do, and minor bug fixes are expected as they learn how to take full advantage of our new platform. We are eager, eager, excuse me, to continue working with developers to further explore the capability of Xbox Series X and S. Ryan, what's what's your reaction to all this? Obviously, it's way, way too early to make any sort of definitive statement about, you know, the, the power of these two consoles. But is this surprising to you after sort of what what the narrative that Microsoft has put out there all this time about the Series X? Yes and no. Uh, yes, just in that. There was on paper a a roughly 20 percent power advantage uh, Mm -hmm. for the Series X. So it is a little surprising that there are these multiple disparities. However, 
seems to be largely relegated to ray tracing. And what I've learned from covering Xbox console launches of the past, the past few generations, it is entirely possible. In fact, I would argue likely that uh, the ray tracing API, the tools that the developers needed to implement the, the ray tracing stuff specifically, might not have come along until near the end of, of development, close, you know, very close to launch. Whereas for all we know, Sony may have, have been able to get their developers those same tools much earlier. So it may just be an issue of time and having more uh, either more time with the tools or a more mature development tool set with regard to the, the ray tracing stuff. Because you know, ray tracing is, we've, we've been doing this show for a year now almost, and ray tracing is probably the, uh, other than the loading times, the sort of thing you'd actually see on the screen the most, the biggest mm -hmm. difference you would see on the screen over the, the generation that's going away now. And so that is the big new shiny thing, uh, quite literally, in some cases. So, yeah, it's it's possible that the tools just haven't been there on the on the Microsoft side, whereas maybe they have on the Sony side. Again, I can't say for sure, but that's history teaches me that that's probably there's a good chance that that's what the the situation is. Yeah, like we said, you know, this is just sort of a, a story that's just beginning to, to develop now. We'll continue following it uh, here on this show. We do have we have plans to put more games uh, through these tests on both consoles. So uh, in a future episode, we'll we'll be able to revisit this and maybe we'll have a, a little bit clearer picture of what what's going on exactly there with these two consoles. Uh, we have the results of last week's poll. When we asked you. Uh, it was well. It wasn't last week. It's two weeks ago now. Uh, this is uh, following the news that Bethesda wants games to be, or Xbox wants Bethesda games to be best, better, or first on its consoles. We asked you what you want most. You want your Bethesda games to be best, better, or first? And the majority responded said best. You just want the best of everything. Specifically, you know, PlayStation Five owners who uh, is a little bit unclear as to when or if they're going to be able to play future Bethesda games. So at least 47% uh, of respondents said they'd be happy with getting it the best version of future Bethesda games. Before we go, we've got a poll for you next week uh, to vote on for next week. We want to know what launch problems have you had with your consoles? Was your order delayed? Was your order canceled? Did you get scammed? Let us know. You can vote uh, on our poll at IGN.com. We'll share the results with you next week. And that will about do it for this edition of Next Gen Console Watch 2020. Only a few more episodes to go before we have to drop that 2020. Uh, thank you to both Ryan and Jonathan. As always, we will be back same time next week, uh, next Friday, uh, 6 a.m. Pacific, 9 a.m. Eastern, with more news and developments on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. We'll see you then.